Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I thought I would tell you how you can comply with Remote ID. Alright, so this video is educational purposes only. I'm not advocating you to do this or not do this. What you decide to do with the information I present here is totally on you, not me. You do what you want to do. This is just to show you how you can do this if you so choose and maybe talk about some things that you could do with this information if you were so inclined. So, you've likely seen the video from Joshua Bardwell talking about a remote ID spoofer. Well, I watched the video and I was like, oh, I've got to, I've got to tinker with this and try this out. This is, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, so I picked up a few of the, uh, the ESP8266, I think it's the right name, uh, boards that uh, he had, uh, had linked in his, in his video. And I got those in, downloaded the little spoofer software, put that on there, tried it out. And sure enough, it worked. But I was like, man, this can be better. Um, so I pulled out a GPS that I had, and I got it connected up here. So um, on the screen here, you will see the basic wiring diagram that you do for this. And I also have it um, in the link below where you can get the... Uh, the code that I released for this. I took the code that Bardwell had used and I modified it and I really uploaded it to uh, GitHub so you can get that and you can tinker with it to your heart's content. You know, do whatever you want to do with it. But anyways, uh, wire diagram, pretty straightforward. You just got four pins that you got to wire up here. CFT, XRX, and ground, and then like an input voltage, which is like 3.3 volts or 5 volts, up to 5 volts for this. But this board puts out 3.3 uh, volts. Um, and then one other thing that you can do with this, you can either power it off of USB or you can actually wire it to the two pins over here on the other side. There's a, a ground and a 5 volt in, so you can uh, supply 5 volts to it and power it that way, either way. Um, so basically the same thing that you do, uh, you follow instructions in Barb's video, but there's one change that you need to do in order to use mine, which is using the GPS code um, if you're so inclined. You're going to get Tiny GPS Plus. It's a little library for Arduino, and you're going to install that. So it's pretty straightforward to do that. I'll show you here on the screen. Basically, you're going to go in, and you're going to either choose on the left-hand side. There's a little library icon. You can click that, or you can go up to the Tools menu and choose Manage Libraries. And then that'll open up the little dialog there on the left. You're going to type in Tiny GPS or Tiny GPS Plus, either one. That's going to give you a list of matches. You're going to choose the one that says Tiny GPS Plus. You're going to click the install. You're going to wait a second, and then it'll be installed. Then the only thing left that you have to do at that point is just like in Bardwell's video, after you followed everything else in his, his set of instructions, is just going to click the little upload button. That's going to upload it to your board, and you'll be good to go. And then you'll be broadcasting and um, doing whatever you want. There is... Um, change that I made to mine, I'm only doing four um, in the code. You can uh, make a change to the code. You can you can tell it how many spoofers you want. You know, if you want four or one, 16, whatever, you know. I think by default on the other one was like 16, but you can change that. I have mine currently at four, um, and that seems to work pretty well. A couple things to note with the apps. So this is one thing I found playing with this stuff over the last several days and a lot of headaches and whatnot with it. Um, these apps are terrible, at least with the Wi-Fi ones. They're, they're just awful. And a big part of it isn't so much the app as it is the OS on your phone. Um, I'm not even sure if iPhone even supports the Wi-Fi stuff or not. It may or may not. I'm not sure. It seems like I read somewhere that it really didn't support it, but maybe it does. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, but it works on Android. One thing to note on the Android uh, device to make it work better, and if you don't do this, you'll likely be like, this thing isn't working at all. This is junk, and that's the boat that I was in for the longest time. Um, you want to go to your settings in your Android phone, and you want to go to the, um, the developer options, and you want to scroll down till you find Wi-Fi scan throttling, and you make sure that that is disabled. Now, when you do that, be aware that your battery usage will definitely go up um, 
when you have that disabled because your phone will constantly be scanning. Um, so just something to keep aware of there. But it does make it work way better and updates way faster. If you don't do that, it's like really, 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 really slow, if at all. Sometimes you'll sit there for a long time and you won't ever see anything. And this thing's just cranking out stuff and your phone is not seeing it. And you'll go up and you'll click your little internet and you'll like go to Wi-Fi. And then all of a sudden you'll see all these little Wi-Fi SSIDs for, for all the drones pop up. You go back to the app and then all of a sudden they're magically there because it was, it was throttling the scanning there of the app. So if you turn that... Uh, Turn that off works way 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 better um, anyways there you go you could take this thing out now and you could comply um, by changing your spoofer to one it, it'll generate a random uh, id it even oh that was a couple changes i made to this so the original code didn't do this but mine does um, generates an actual uas id for the different drones the other one didn't, it just said unknown all the time. I didn't like that. Um, it also didn't um, update the status of the drone to be like in the air all the time. It was kind of quirky there, so I fixed that. And um, it had the ability to go way beyond the 400 foot uh, limit on the altitude that it would report, so I changed that. So basically you're at under 400 feet. Um, just a couple of minor, minor quirks here and there that I fixed on it. Um, but yeah, it works pretty well. So you could, you know, you could change it to one, pop this in your bag, you go offline and, you know, crank it up and you've always got a drone in the air blasting remote ID. So if someone's actually looking, they'll see a drone, they won't think anything about it probably. Um, you know, if you have a bunch of buddies, you can make it crank out for, you know, however many people are there flying if you wanted. You know, that, that's something you could do if you were so inclined. Um, you could... Put this in your car and have it blast out, you know, 16 of them while you're driving around and, um, you know, be drones popping up here and there. Now, a couple of interesting things with this one also, I update the pilot location. So if you're moving around, if you change location more than like, I think about a quarter of a kilometer or so, then it'll update the pilot location. The drone locations are still the same, but the pilot will be moving. So if you're driving around, it'll be, you'll be moving um, wherever you're at. Um, always blasting out drone locations. Um, so that's something you could do with it. Or you could just, you know, learn how to do a little Arduino programming. You know, it's pretty uh, pretty easy, pretty fun. Um, definitely something I'm going to be tinkering with, I think. I've got two more of these that I'm going to mess with for some other projects, maybe. I'm going to see what I can get into with these things. I think they'd be kind of fun, kind of cool little devices. Um, and you can also hack this thing. I found a few hacks on, basically, you scrape a spot here on this and then you can solder an external antenna so you get much better range um range on this isn't terrible though i mean outside you get pretty good range like you know i can go from one side of my house to the other inside the house with con you know these concrete block walls and stuff and it's okay you know you can you can pick it up it's not great the the dbms are really low but um you can pick it up outside i figure it'll be way better i haven't tested it outside i thought about trying it out down the park and see how far away I can go and pick it up and we'll see uh, see how that is. I might try that at some point um, and see. So yeah, so there you go. Educational purposes only. Do what you will with this information. Um, but whatever you guys do, never stop flying. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.